All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We've got a Q&A. Thanks to the Megan boys right before, they did some great giveaways with the kids. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce, I have the distinct honor of doing a little Q&A here with Hockey Hall of Famer, Doug Gilmore. Can we get a round of applause for Mr. Gilmore? Thanks for being here with us today. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, Pulling in here today was crazy. It was like I was coming from Burlington, and it was like I, I left about an hour early, thank goodness, because uh, I didn't know where to park either. Well, I, I think you're a pro in both realms, right? Hockey and, like, traveling at this point. Yeah, I did a lot of traveling, obviously, with the junior ranks as well for 11 years. So it's uh, something that uh, I've kind of slowed down on. But uh, <laughs> uh, I like to spend uh, kind of pretty much a homebody these days. And, and uh, we were just talking up here. My son plays in Geneseo, which is by Rochester. So I get to go up and see him play a little bit too. Which is fantastic. Awesome. And I know you said it in his last year, so... Got to get to as many games as you can there. So uh, I know we only got a few minutes with you here. Uh, I'd like to I, – I, everybody talks to you about hockey, obviously. So I was almost going to go the collecting realm a little bit. So obviously we're at the Toronto Sports Card Expo. So for you, were you ever or are you still a collector of any sort? I guess I, I used to be a collector. Um, I've got uh, a Rolling Stone signed guitar. Um, I've got uh, some – Kind of handmade prints from uh, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. And then my, one of my nicest thing was uh, there was only 100 done. Uh, it was Michael Jordan's last shot, and I got one of those. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, I, yeah, you got some I lived pieces. in Chicago, so I got uh, to know some people. And, <laughs> sure, sure. And uh, the right way. So, real quick, I'm going into business for myself. Side note, let's take the first three Pearl Jam albums versus Corduroy and 10. How do you rank them? I'm, uh, I don't really go by albums. I just go by songs. Fair enough. So that's okay. Fair enough. It was, it was pretty cool. Uh, again, living in Chicago, um, had a chance to go to, uh, the house of blues and Eddie Vedder, uh, opened up playing aware oh, where has my baby been? Oh. And, uh, he opened up for the who, and it was pretty cool that, uh, we got to meet Roger Daltrey, Pete Townsend and, um, stuff that, yeah. You, never in a lifetime you think about it. So, and you know, on that note, obviously throughout your career, you've gotten those opportunities. So, you know, when someone approaches you and they might be a big fan, maybe a little nervous, but did you have that feeling? Was there anybody like adultery, uh, anybody like that that you met during your time that maybe you had a little bit of starstruck? Yeah, I'd say Eddie Vedder for sure. Um, it's. Uh, I'm from Kingston, Ontario, small town. Um, my parents were penitentiary workers. And I was blessed to play a game, and um, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, your time here today, you know, how's it been? I know you came in, went straight to signing, but how many of these shows have you done now? Are you, are you a regular here at this point? Um, I've, I usually do one or two a year. Yeah. Um, not too many, but... Uh, as I just mentioned, Chicago, I get to go there next week for one of these shows, so I get to stay overnight and see some friends, so it's going to be good. Oh, boy, yeah, that'll, that'll be a good time for sure. So, you know, when you get to do these type of things, uh, do you have the time or do you make a little time maybe to kind of walk around the floor and maybe see if you can find some unique pieces that you haven't seen? I, I'm not going to purchase anything while I'm here, but it's always great to walk around and see what uh, c collectors have and... and uh, I don't know, it's, it's something that, if you're into this, and I am, so uh, again, this is something, I grew up as a hockey fan too, you know, growing up watching Bobby Orr, and I'm sitting in the back with uh, Jerry Cheevers, and I was a Boston fan, because I wore number four growing up, so number four, Bobby Orr, number four, Doug Gilmore, it rhymed, so it worked. <laughs> uh you know, and so once again, you say you have the Michael Jordan, you have the Eddie Vedder kind of stuff. And I know now modern uh, jersey swap you see in football and that has become pretty popular. But yourself over time playing the years that you played, you know, was there ever anything from guys that you played with? or against that you were maybe like, hey, can I, can I grab that after the game or anything like that? We, we never even thought about that in the days because, you know, you're playing against a team. Yes, you want a Wayne Gretzky stick or a Mary Lemieux stick or something. But, uh, yeah, it was 
pretty, uh, there's different times. I don't think you're going to ask for a stick if yeah. uh, the game didn't go that well. That's fair. That's fair. And uh, something I always like when I get a chance to talk to, to athletes is obviously you being some, somewhat of a memorabilia collector yourself. But when you were, when you were younger and getting a chance to, to see yourself for the first time on a, on a trading card like that, you know, what, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it's uh, surreal because I grew up collecting cards as well. And I know back in our days, we used them, put them in our wheels. Yeah, the bikes. Oh, yeah. Bike spinners. And so uh, my first card, yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. And as time went on and the card companies got bigger, it, uh, if they made a card, we'd get 500 of them. So, you get, so I've got probably about 10,000 hockey cards sitting in a hockey bag in my garage. So. They're, they sound like they're in the safe spot. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> I slowly go through them, try to sign them, and just keep them for the kids uh, when I'm gone. That's amazing. And, you know, something like that, too, is obviously I'm sure you'll pass some stuff on to your kids. But do you remember, was there anything that your parents held on of yours as sort of a memento um, throughout your playing career? Thank you for asking. My parents are both gone now, but... Um, when we went through their house after they passed on, uh, my dad had it framed, and it was in his closet. It was my first contract. So wow. it is, uh, it's pretty cool. It was 65 pro and 23,000 minors. So Far cry from what we got it's nowadays, a bit different right? Now, yes. <laughs> it's a little bit different. And what's it like for you to you know, be able to take that stuff in and kind of share that now with your family and kind of pass that on? Yeah, my, my oldest daughter, Maddie, was born when we won the cup in Calgary so she gets the Calgary stuff like Stanley Cup ring and then all the other stuff uh, the other three kids got to fight over so whatever they want they can have that's amazing and you know I got to tell you speaking of speaking of winning the cup in Calgary uh, something I always like to ask too is you've wore some pretty legendary sweaters I would say uh, and you know not to be biased but I love that you got to wear the goat head in Buffalo but what do you think's one of or a couple of your favorite jerseys that you got to wear during your time? He's from Buffalo, so when I got traded to Buffalo from Chicago, um, it's HSBC Arena. Oh, yeah. And I, I figured what that meant. Holy shoot, Buffalo's cold. He's not wrong. I, can, <laughs> I, I can't confirm. It's, you're not wrong. Yeah, no, it was, it was a good time. Had some great players, and uh, like Hasek was there. and um, it, it was something that I play with seven teams, so when they ask me what team you like the most, I say all of them, just like a politician would. So Yeah, very but, diplomatic but answer. But my longest-standing team was uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and, and that was a, a pretty cool run. Yeah, absolutely electric sweater, too. Obviously, it's classic. And uh, something else is it's, it's always interesting to hear the stories about the barns you guys played in, obviously. And, you know, I've heard from countless interviews on YouTube, obviously, stories about the Saddle Dome and that, but... I guess, what was probably one of your favorite places to play, just in terms of atmosphere, look, and how the locker rooms were? But then on the opposite end, what was the one that was like, oh, we got to go, go in there tonight? Um, Maple Leaf Gardens, obviously, uh, grew up watching the Leafs. And being from Kingston, you had Montreal one side, Toronto the other side. And it was, uh, I was a hockey fan, uh, first and foremost. But the most intimidating rink to ever go in was uh, Chicago Stadium. <laughs> yeah, Ricky. Could you tell? I was gonna say, could you tell yeah. Rick Flair's in the house? You would have never known. You'd have no. never known. Um, and I know we only got a few short minutes here with you. More. So something, something else is obviously you at defense. But for you, what's a team like a dream team that you would want to build around you, past or present, that you would like to build out your starting six? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough call. Um, it is, it is. I think the dream team for me um, was playing 87 Canada Cup with Gretzky, Mario, Howard Chuck, Ray Bork, the list goes on. And to be a part of that and learn from these guys was uh, something that I'll never forget. Absolutely. Last little thing is I feel like a lot of athletes in, in your era do such a good job of your autographs. Uh, bringing it back to collecting. You know, we've spoken to Ronick, and Ronick was very adamant about the way his autograph looked. 
So for you, you know, did you, did you ever practice your auto or try to get it down where it was nice and legible? I think we did a little bit of that in junior hockey. And then I did write my whole Gilmore name out. And then as uh, time went on, it uh, became a little bit shorter. Fair enough. Well, Doug, I, I want to thank you for joining us up here today. Uh, can we give it up for Mr. Thank Doug Gilmore, guys. everybody, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much. We'll be back.